Today, I'd like to do a reading on Peggy and Paul. This is all allegedly for entertainment purposes only. I'm literally a chick tarot deck, and I just read energy. And if you make the trash bucket list, that's because your energy is not light, and that's okay. That's your path. You know, they were drinking and arguing and fighting, and, you know, in an intoxicated state of rage and jealousy. She just decided that she was going to do something about it and, you know, put the car in reverse and ran them down and left them there to die. And we figured it out as soon as she left the house that day when she came over. We didn't talk to any investigators, state police, nobody. You know, my mother had said, do you think she has something to do with this? And I said, we're not going to think like that. Went outside to the driveway to look at her car and her car was gone. It was a blizzard. I knew what the driving conditions were like coming from the hospital to Canton. And I knew that they were going to back to Dighton, which is a much further drive. Mm -hmm. So I, we put it together pretty quickly. I was going to ask you that next. So you took words out of my mouth. It was like, when did you realize it was literally that morning? <clears throat> yeah. So I would say early afternoon when they came back to the house, you know, she wanted to come over and see the kids. Didn't really interact with them at all. Was there for probably a total of 30 minutes. Didn't say much or anything and half of her time was upstairs gathering her things but today after this hearing this morning where paul he looks like the dark side has put him away wet i have questions and i'd also like to thank everyone who's been here since Last year, what a change, what a difference a year makes. I was still working in corporate bill and I was doing these at night and I could tell it was, it took a lot for me to leave corporate bill. I'd been there for 20 years and I was an exec and I was perfectly happy with my little life, but the universe had different plans. So as I just said, sacred space called in the quarters, I asked John and Sandra if they'd like to join us. Oh, and Enrique, I have a lot of questions. I have 10 specific questions for Peggy. And I'm just trying to feel out this energy. And we'll have to go into it or not. And so we'll say how it goes. But first, so I have 10 questions that can all be backed up by the internet. <laughs> Everyone has Google. So they did do a little bit of a deeper dive than I expected. Because if anything, if Idaho 4 taught us anything, it was to save everything. Because they'll wipe it or they'll edit it. But so that's what I was doing today. and. The questions that I have, this is Peggy or Paul, if you're here, this is, you're going to be in the hot seat for this entire read. Conspiracy theory that holds no merit, no evidence. I mean, we, we know these people. I mean, Jen McCabe has been a family friend of ours. She was friends with my sister. Um, we've known her for over 10 years. She was very helpful with, um, you know, picking Kaylee up to and fro mm -hmm. um, when he took over uh, raising the kids. Um, Carrie Roberts, we've known for a very, very long time, right? And at the time, she didn't really know Jen McCabe. Or any of the McCabe's or Alberts. And her testimony corroborated everything that Jen said. And the defense, I think, was scared of her and didn't want to ask her any questions. They just wanted her off the stand. McCabe was on the stand for a total of five and a half hours. The next. If you indicated that you had never met Trooper Proctor before September of 2023, that would be a false statement, correct? Objection. You can answer that, Ms. McCabe. I met Proctor January 29th. It's everywhere. If you said it, would it have been false? That's all I'm asking. Yes. Okay. Um. And I guess the the negative or hate that's directed towards me, mostly me and my mother, is... Karen Reed's murder trial captivated much of Massachusetts and the internet. I'm Julie Miller. I spent three days with Karen Reed shortly after her trial ended with a hung jury. And these are some of the most shocking things I learned about her and her case. 
shortly after O'Keefe's death, she went to his house where John's family also was. Karen claims that when she asked John's family, you know, how did he look? What did he look like? She claims that John's brother, Paul, said he looked like he went five rounds with Mike Tyson. Almost immediately after, John's mom said, according to Karen, I think that he looks like he got hit by a car. John's family denies that that exchange happened the way that Karen explains it. But Karen says that after that alleged conversation, that is the moment she realized she was viewed as a suspect. Since John O'Keefe's murder, Karen's gone to pretty extreme lengths to prove her innocence. The Albert family sold their house in 2023. A source close to Albert told me that that had nothing to do with the case. That was because the house was simply too big for the family since their children were grown. But once the house was sold, Karen's detective was able to get a hold of all the carpeting that the new owners were getting rid of that had been in the house when the Alberts owned it. Since then, she's been paying for a temperature controlled storage unit to store this rug, this carpeting, in the hopes that she can one day swab it for DNA or for blood. I asked her what that would cost. She said that it's about $5,000 per swab and she has no idea where on that carpet John's DNA might be. So at this point, everything is a game of calculus in terms of where she puts her expenses. Another critical point of contention in the case has been a Google search that Jennifer McCabe, Brian Albert's sister-in-law, did the morning of John O'Keefe's death. Karen's expert found that she had Google searched Haas long to die in cold at 2.27 a.m. The timestamp is incredibly important because 2.27 a.m. would indicate that she knew John's body was out in the lawn at Albert's home. The Commonwealth had several experts testifying, though, that the timestamp didn't actually indicate the time of the search. She could have opened the tab to search at 2.27, but she didn't search until after 6 a.m., as she says happened. I was able to find a forensic computer experts to look at the information that the prosecution's experts and Reed's expert had gathered. He came to his own independent conclusion saying that the search did happen at 2.27 a.m. In addition to talking to Karen, I also spoke to her family, her friends. I spoke to a juror on the trial. If you want to read more from my reports, go to VanityFair.com. Because we support these people who are being falsely accused of something they didn't do. Video of Reed's SUV that prosecutors showed to the jury may not be what it seems. This video appears to be flipped, the image of it. The defense says flipped on purpose. News Center 5's David Beenick live at the courthouse in Dedham to explain more. David. Erica, this revelation came at the end of today's testimony here, and it caught everyone off guard. Some jurors even looked at each other quizzically, and some may have wondered if they'd just been tripped. The video shows police pulling Karen Reed's SUV into the Canton Police Department garage after it was seized as evidence. The video appears to show the passenger side, including the passenger side taillight, which prosecutors say was damaged after Reed allegedly backed into John O'Keefe and killed him. I testify that this is a accurate uh, scene. But under cross-examination, state police investigator Yuri Buhenik confirmed the video is actually inverted. It shows not the passenger side, but the driver's side of the SUV. At one point, it shows the driver getting out. Not once did you mention that this video is actually completely inverted. I did not know. How did you discover that the image was inverted? I saw the word police and thought I had dyslexia. <laughs> In the video, the word police appears backwards on another vehicle parked in the garage. So does the number four on one of the garage's overhead doors. Defense attorney Alan Jackson believes it was no accident. The timestamp across the bottom is not inverted, which means somebody had to put that on the, the inverted, the, the manipulated, the altered video on purpose. Here is the video again after we have uninverted it. What is in fact the passenger side taillight is out of view and there appears to be somebody standing near it. Who's the guy in the watch cap, in the winter cap, back there by that right rear taillight the entire time by himself? That's Proctor. 
Proctor is Trooper Michael Proctor, the lead investigator on the case. Now, the defense has said that he is the one who broke the taillight as part of an effort, they say, to frame Karen Reed. I did reach out to the district attorney's office about that inverted video. They said they would not comment. They made a claim to a reporter in public, claiming to have a personal relationship with this court. And he tried to prove it by citing to the fact that Sean McKay knows personal information about the judge was extremely troubled about a beach home, not just the fact that the court may own one, but exactly where it is. On the Cave's words were, after receiving a question from the reporter, do you really have a line to Judge Canoni? His answer was, on the web, who's seaside cottage do you think we're going to bury your corpse on? Extremely troublesome dialogue, but it's not just the threat that's inherent in the dialogue. That's on one level. It's the fact that this person claimed to know that this court may own a beachside cottage somewhere. Jerry just came back with a note that I have never seen. It's Judge Bev here, Auntie Bev. I have never seen this before. Your Honor, I, I will say I've appeared before hundreds. I, I, at this point, I'm getting old. I may have appeared before thousands of judges in my nearly 30-year career. I've never, ever known where a single one of them has ever lived or property that they may or may not have owned. But Sean McCabe appears to know, and he appears to intimate that he knows the details of this court's personal life. I didn't memorize them. I understand. Would you so if you want to give me the paper back, then I could probably answer correctly. Those aren't all the calls that you had with Trooper Proctor. That didn't stop. It's just where these logs stop. Correct? I'm not sure. Okay. I'd have to look at phone records. I don't know. You remember a call on February 17th, lasting about two minutes? I don't know. Do you remember a call on February 28th, lasting about two minutes? I don't recall. A call on February 28th. Lasting about a minute? Don't recall. On March 1st, another call with Trooper Proctor lasting about a minute? I do not recall. Apparently a second call on March 1st lasting about two minutes and a few seconds? I don't recall. On March 11th, another call in the afternoon lasting about 12 minutes? I don't recall. And finally, a call toward the end of March, March 29th, lasting about, about four minutes. Again, I don't recall. Okay. You are unmuted. I said, okay, so you're Brad Pitt. That don't impress me much. The defendant said, how many JMOs deep are you? The feeding trough was all set up, so I know Nagel couldn't have been far. We did pull footage from the library and from the Prohibition reflecting pool. I was not messing around with Nagel. That was for Bukaki. Uh... Uh, that was used to scan the area for any missing people. He likes to take his false teeth out and bob for apples. <laughs> Anytime anyone puts on the leather, girls. <laughs> we cannot hear you over the fans, okay? Please speak up. And that goes double for you, Mr. Lally, okay? These are not mine. I said it's not fair to deny me of the cross-eyed bear that you gave me. You ought to know. I have 2020 hearing. She never mentioned a blob. Right? And their lives have been turned upside down and partially ruined. You know, Colin Albert, who was a 17-year-old kid at the time, his life has been turned upside down and ruined. Um, I've gotten to know um, the Alberts through all this, and they're all good people. Mm. Um, so just the... Just because we don't believe in a crazy conspiracy theory. And in the Karen Reed case, the prosecution is now questioning a second woman who was with Karen Reed when she found John O'Keefe in the snow. As WBZ's Anna Myler shows us, the first woman wrapped up her testimony with some fiery exchanges with the defense. Jennifer McCabe was back on the stand this morning for tense questioning about Google searches that she made and what time she made them on the day Boston police officer John O'Keefe's body was found in the snow. 
This morning, Karen Reed's lawyers questioned McCabe about the now infamous misspelled Google search she made, Haas Long to die in cold. She says Reed told her to make those Google searches. She was screaming, Google hypothermia, how long does it take to die in the cold? How about and I picked up my phone and I started Googling. In court today, the defense pointed to cell phone data showing the first time McCabe made that search was at 2.27 in the morning, hours before John O'Keefe's body was discovered. Defense attorney Alan Jackson says the timing of the search exonerates Karen Reed and implicates McCabe in O'Keefe's death. Ms. McCabe, you made that search at 2.27 a.m. because you knew that John O'Keefe was outside in your sister's lawn dying in the cold, didn't you? Absolutely not. I did not make that search at that time. No. Did you delete that search because you knew that you would be implicated in John O'Keefe's death if that search was found on your phone? I did not delete that search. I never made that search at 2.23. I never would have left John O'Keefe out in the cold to die because he was my friend that I loved. In court filings, the prosecution has said the defense is misinterpreting that cell phone data. Reed's lawyers are trying to convince the jury that McCabe is part of a scheme to frame Reed for O'Keefe's death. Reed is accused of hitting O'Keefe, her boyfriend, with her SUV and leaving him to die in the snow in January 2022. McCabe was on the stand for a total of five and a half hours. The next witness is Carrie Roberts, who was with Karen Reed and Jen McCabe the morning John O'Keefe's body was found. Anna Myler, WBZ News. Our streaming the Karen Reed trial live on CBS News Boston. You'll find our streaming service on the CBS News app, Pluto TV, or on WBZ.com. Just because we don't believe in a crazy conspiracy theory and we believe that Karen Reed is guilty of killing my brother, you know, they take it on us. Karen Reed was back in court today ahead of her trial next month. Her attorneys are seeking to have her murder charges dropped, citing new information from a federal investigation. Our NBC10's Kirsten Glavin is live outside Norfolk Superior Court with the new developments from this high-profile case. Kirsten. As far as dropping those charges go, the judge says she will wait to decide on that. But we did speak with a law expert tonight, and he says he does believe this case is going to go to trial and that it's looking more and more like an uphill battle for the state. Defense attorneys for Karen Reed dropping explosive new details in court Tuesday about the findings of a separate federal investigation looking into John O'Keefe's death. O'Keefe, a Boston police officer, was found dead in a snowstorm back in 2022 in Canton. Reed is accused of fatally striking him with her SUV. The federal investigators hired a professional reconstructionist, three PhDs, to look into exactly this, this issue. Reed's defense attorney saying an independent expert concluded that O'Keefe's injuries were not consistent with the damage to Reed's vehicle. In other words, the car didn't hit him and he wasn't hit by the car, period, full stop. The defense also alleging relationships between law enforcement and those closely involved were not disclosed. That includes texts between the lead investigator, his sister and the Albert family who lived at the home where O'Keefe's body was found. Prosecutors firing back that this is all a distraction from evidence. What the defense is obfuscating from is the overwhelming evidence that was presented to this grand jury from a multitude of sources. I've been doing this for 16 years. Every single day, I've never seen anything like this. Injury Criminal defense team. attorney Ben Herbalis says these federal findings are a game changer. He adds that conflict of interests will likely pose challenges during trial. If they don't believe him or they don't believe his integrity, and he's the one who's saying, I found this piece of glass. I discovered this piece of hair. Um, and they believe that his integrity is compromised because he has um, an interest of the outcome because he is protecting the Alberts. Um, the whole case goes out the window for the Commonwealth. Now, the defense also says they want the Norfolk District Attorney disqualified from this case. As of right now, it is still set to go to trial on April 16th. We're live outside of Norfolk Superior Court tonight. I'm Kirsten Glavin, NBC10 Boston. To extreme temperatures, right? If you wanted to know the answer to that, what would you Google search? What phrase would you use? 
I'm not sure. All I recall is what the defendant asked me to Google in the morning. If you wanted to know, I'm asking a different question. Mm -hmm. If you personally wanted to know, how long does it take for a person to die of exposure due to extreme temperatures, what would you put in? What phrase would you use? Objection. Sustained. Well, we don't have to guess at the phrase that you would use if you wanted to know something about dying of hypothermia, do we? Did you actually Google search it? Objection. Sustained. Ask that differently, please. Did you, in fact, use a phrase to Google search how long it takes for someone to die of extreme temperatures? I did in the morning at the request of your client. Okay. And what phrase did you use? I'm not sure. Really? Correct. I was After two and a half years of this. You don't know the phrase that you used. Objection, Your Honor. There's so many lies okay. and misconceptions no on social media. No question. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Are you telling me you don't remember what Google search you put in? Karen was screaming. My hands were shaking. And she was saying, Google hypothermia, how long does it take to die in the cold? And what did you, what phrase did you put in your phone? I'm just asking you to say it. Why don't you show me it? You literally don't remember? Again, she was screaming, Google hypothermia, how long does it take to die in the cold? How about? And I picked up my phone and I started Googling. And you literally, to this day, right now, under oath, you're saying you don't remember that phrase that you used. Objection. I'll allow it. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that at her... Do you remember it or do you not, Ms. McCabe? That's a simple question. That morning, I don't remember specifically what I Googled, but I do know what you've put out to the social media. How about this? Hoss long to die in cold. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's been everywhere. Why does that sound so familiar? Because you've put it out in social media. Well, I haven't put anything out in social media because I don't personally have social media. I'm sorry, Turtle Boy did. So if the world happens to know it, mm -hmm. that's not on me, is it? I guess not. I guess not. Hoss long to die in cold is what you put in to the Google search, right? If you say so. Is there a reason that you don't want to admit to that? Absolutely not. It's a I, simple question, right? No reason. So say it. What Google search did you use? Objection. Sustained. You were seeking at some point to Google how long to die in the cold, correct? Correct. And you made a mistake and mistakenly typed how long to die in cold. Correct? You could show me it. I'd appreciate it. You later Google searched. May I approach your honor? Yes. Thank you. While she looks at that, Mr. Jackson, can we bring our clerk back upstairs? Of course, yes. I, I think we're back. Thank you very much. Can you text Thank Jimmy you. and tell him? Oh. Take a look at that report and tell me if that refreshes your recollection. Yes, it does. Does that appear to be an accurate? Uh, page from a Celebrite extraction from your phone? It does. Okay. May I have that back? Uh, I'm sorry, may I approach? Yes. May I have that back for a second? Yes. Did you see this, the actual search phrase? Yes. Does that now refresh your recollection? Yes. But I'd like to have this marked as uh, next in order. Exhibit, please. Is there an objection, Mr. Lally? No, Your Honor. Jim? May I? Yes. Is that Madam Court Reporter? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Move to publish this, Your Honor. Okay. 
Does this appear to be the document that was just marked as Exhibit 99? Yes. Um, I know it's a little bit small, Mr. Jason. Um, you see this column? Yes. Third column from the patches, the fourth column from the left. One, some dates, uh, some data, and then a Google search, correct? Correct. What does that Google search say? House long to die in cold. Now, you indicate that you did that, you made that search at 6.23 a.m., correct? Correct. And then you indicated that you did it again thereafter at 6.24, correct? Correct. At 6.24, you misspelled the phrase and you spelled it as follows, how long T-I die in C-I-K-D. Correct? Correct. Now you claim that those two searches were at 623 and 624 AM respectively. Correct? Objection. Phrase it differently. Sure. You've indicated under direct examination that these two searches were at 623 and 624 AM, right? I don't know if I gave exact times, but I said it was in the morning and Karen had asked me to do it. And you, exactly, you claim that you searched it because Karen was screaming at you and yelling at you, Google hypothermia, and you Googled, how long does it take for a person to die? I'm sorry, she said something like, how long does it take for a person to die of hypothermia? And you Google searched it at 623 and 624. Is that right? Again, I'm not sure about the exact times. I just did it after Karen asked me to do it. Would you quarrel with the idea that those were about 30 seconds apart? Okay. Um, and you're aware, Ms. McCabe, that both spellings, both misspellings of that phrase result in the exact same search results, don't they? I'm not aware of that, no. Well, you Google them, ma'am. You're looking on your phone and you Google them. How long to die in cold and how long to die in CIKD? Both of those. You Google them, right? I did, yes. And they result in the exact same search results, don't they? I have no idea. So my question to you is, why the two searches? She was standing next to me, screaming, shaking my hand. My hand was cold. I was trying to Google it. Obviously, maybe whatever came up first didn't make sense because I had some misspellings. So I did it again. So hot long to die in cold results in particles concerning time of exposure, doesn't it? We never got the chance to read it. Well, you're the one, when you say we, who's we? Karen and myself. Well, you're the one holding the phone, Mr. Cade. Correct. So you're looking down at your phone and you see exactly what comes up, right? I don't remember exactly what came up. Well, what came up was something about dying hypothermia, didn't it? That's what she asked. So why do it again? Why do it again, Ms. McKay? You have the result. Why the second search? I cannot answer that beyond telling you that my hands were frozen. She was shaking me and screaming at me. And you see the time. Let me scroll up, please. According to that, the celebrate data. You see this first search that says hostile to die in cold? I do. What's that time? You've got the, um, it's right over at 2.27. A.M. or P.M.? A.M. Ms. McCabe, you made that search at 2.27 a.m. because you knew that John O'Keefe was outside in your sister's lawn dying in the cold, didn't you? Absolutely not. I did not make that search at that time. No. The next morning, after John was discovered, after 6 a.m., that you had an incriminating search on your phone, didn't you? Absolutely not. To cover your tracks, 
you searched it again in order to overwrite <coughs> the original search at 227. Correct? Again, absolutely not. But you were nervous and you screwed it up. So the first search you made at 623 was Haas Long to Die in CIKD, wasn't it? No. And you see the search right there, correct? I see the search, but I disagree with your narrative. And what's the time frame of that search? 623. And you agree that time frame is accurate, right? Again, it's what the report says. And that's a, that comports with your memory of that morning, about 623 in the morning in 51 seconds. Correct. There's a second search. Correct? Correct. And this one... At 624, it says hostile to die in cold. 624, 16, correct? Correct. I'm sorry, 18. Wow, that was great. And that comports with your memory as well. I remember Googling it at the request of the defendant, yes. About 27 seconds apart, correct? Yes. But the reality is, your first search didn't comport with the 2.27 a.m. search, did it? It was a different spell, wasn't it? I never searched a 227. That is not reality. But the 624 search did exactly mirror the search that, according to this report, took place at 227, correct? I'm sure Celebrite will be able to explain it to you. I can't. And then of those three searches, one of them ended up deleted. Isn't that right? I never deleted any search conspiracy theory that holds no merit, no evidence. Take a look at the celebrated report. Top search. And the column marks deleted. What do you see? I see a yes. I mean, we, we know these people. I mean, Jen McCabe has been a family friend of ours. She was friends with my sister. Um, we've known her for over 10 years. She was very helpful with, um, you know, picking Kaylee up to and fro. Mm -hmm. Ms. McCabe, the reason you deleted that 2.27 a.m. call was because you realized that if you were caught Googling how long it takes for a person to die in the cold three and a half hours before John's body was found, that would incriminate you, wouldn't it? Objection. The objection sustained. Did you delete that search because you knew that you would be implicated in John O'Keefe's death if that search was found on your phone? Objection. I'll let you. Could you answer that, please? I did not delete that search. I never made that search at 2.23. I never would have left John O'Keefe out in the cold to die because he was my friend that I loved. But he's not your family, is he? Family and friends. Is he not your Sustained. You acknowledge that you made the search at 6.23, don't you? What is, first question, what is Peggy O'Keefe's true intention in seeking justice for her son? I should put justice for her son. All right, I'm going to read these out loud, and when I get to one that feels right, I'm going to do it. What is the nature of Peggy's relationship with Paul regarding the case? Is there a hidden motive or influence driving Peggy's actions towards Karen? What external or internal forces are impacting Peggy and Paul's pursuit of Karen's conviction? Pretty much answer these without a tarot deck. How does Peggy, who cares? That question I don't care about. How does she perceive Karen? Right there. Karen, if you're here, hi, welcome. Are Peggy and Paul acting solely in the interest for justice? Or what is their real intention? What role does the truth have in Peggy and Paul's pursuit of Karen? Just zero. I don't need an arrow deck to answer these questions. What underlying energies connect Peggy and Paul to Karen? So those are my 10 or however many questions I just read. I am feeling out this energy. It's heads are going to roll in two months. That's all I'm going to say. And Josh Levy, you've got to pick up the speed. You want to keep your job. This is the case that you can live with. If you don't, I've said that. 
I just wrote down all these questions and I feel like we don't need tarot to answer any of them. I think her motive is money. Her intentions are not pure and she makes horrible decisions every single day for in this trashy energy. She's in a low vibe. I, I don't know if we need tarot to tell us that. We already know that. I think it was in Vanity Fair number two that Karen says is the next day that she knew Peggy was setting her up. She doesn't actually use those words, but I'm paraphrasing. Everyone has Google. So what that might do, as much as I also don't like Jen from a cave, because she's sleeping with her sister's husband, and I can leave it at that, or was, there perhaps Peggy was actually instrumental. Like she, maybe she's the puppeteer. Jennifer's just a willing participant instead of it being Jennifer. This is much more like Idaho then. This is a place that we're comfortable in. The dad is totally cool and normal and the mom is not. Well, that's an interesting question. Is Peggy actually the ring, the mastermind? That would make a lot of sense. All right. You got a new deck. And I'd like to thank all the OGs. You've come a long way, baby. What a difference not working for Burville and internationally. I like that. Don't get me wrong. I think Peggy is the mastermind in this. I think, of course she is. That's where all the trashy mothers are. Right at the head, right at the top. The only case we haven't found the actual mom in that was the Delphi girls and the sister played a role in that. I want to ask if Peggy is the mastermind. I gave, maybe perhaps we all gave. Why doesn't, oh, you know what? Aaron's team should call Peggy to the stand. That's what they should do. And put her under oath. Yes, that's what I think you guys should, that, if you guys are watching, call Peggy O'Keefe to the stand. Put her under oath and ask her. They don't care about the, oath, the under oath thing. In two months, they will, though. Life is about to change, as these guys all know. Well, if they didn't get the memo. The celebrities connected to our afternoon traffic card, Ashton Kutcher, I've done readings on him, burning his house, trying to flee to Europe. So I was just thinking in my mind, is Peggy the mastermind? This is what Karen's... Karen, if you're watching, or if you're nutty, any of you guys, call Peggy will keep the stand. Call her. Because I hadn't even asked a question, and the it is likely card just jumped. Peggy will keep the mastermind, undoubtedly. Looks like yes. Yeah. That's what you guys should do. Karen Reed, I probably would have been your friend when we were in high school or college. You went to college with a couple of my girlfriends. And what you should do is call Peggy, call her. They are just cards, this is all allegedly, but I just asked, is Peggy you the mastermind? It looks like a yes. It is likely and undoubtedly just dumped. Her came up, so I'd call her. In two months, everyone's going to care about things like perjury. Come on, Josh Levy, get going. If the feds want to move, the feds can move. We know they take their time and they do a great job, and I've been defending it this whole time, but I do like you in that position, so if you could keep your job, I'd appreciate it. All right, so that just is a game. That's a game changer because I've always thought that McCabe and Albert were the masterminds. So I've asked before, I'm going to use Ashley at the Reckonings cards. I've asked before about the CNA card being call or Peggy's. I'm using Ashley at the Reckonings cards right now because, but what this is saying is that Peggy is the mastermind. That means I'm. I'm still, I still say that Paul was there that night. And I don't care what any of these people say. And we are not going into 34 Fairview to ask her. That's a, we're respecting, she's in the grieving process. That confirms to me that Peggy or Paul and or Paul were there that night. Because they started thinking about this from the dash cam video that Turtle Boy just, well, not just, but that Turtle Boy follows Jen around as she doesn't assist. That's a crime, too. I'm sure that's a felony some, other than everything else she's done. And if Paul met someone at the high school, Peggy's the mastermind. This guy's never ceased to amaze me. Oh, boy. I didn't. didn't. Okay. So she just got really real for Peggy. I are, are literally telling on her hard. All right. So I just felt called to use Ashley at the reckoning deck. And what we got, this child was murdered. And here's our home safety system. Cannot wait for that. Oh, that's probably how they got Brian Albert's flip. I bet you. They were like, you don't, you can work with us because we have your home security system you forgot about or whatever he did. The home safety system. 
can tell us the truth about these red flags and you are pinning it on the girl. This was our family. You're trying to run away and escape. No one gave them medical care and it's preserved. Aaron, we know at least the rug is preserved. I bet you once I can go into that, I can remote view. I can remote view and I can lay the carpet down the way it was laid in the house and tell because right now it's like a needle in a haystack but I can help you with that. I just can't do it yet. Just like a mother, we would respect you. She screwed. Here comes our Republican. Hurry up. Come on, Josh Levy. There's gonna, here's our neighborhood. There's going to be a lot of regret. All, all hiding behind the name of the church. It's a good day to see the Church of England starting to fall. It's all an optical illusion. I saw someone's comment, don't leave your kids with anyone. That's for like kids our age now. That we're left alone. That now, I feel like, I wouldn't even put my, the, I have nieces. I don't even have children on Santa's lap. Absolutely not. I made him sit next to him to take a picture because what kind of, who, I don't know. That's just a generational thing. I'm getting a stop. In conclusion, we just figured out that Peggy is actually the mastermind, not Benifer. Jen, Karen's team should call Peggy to the stand and they should ask her. They don't have to ask her hard questions. It's just going to, where were you that night? Get her phone records. Subpoena her phone records. Figure out where she was that night. You'll be able to see the communication between her and Paul. And then we can figure out where Paul really was. And I bet you the way that they got Brian Albert to flip was they showed him the video and said, you can work with us or you can take your chance. But then that's it. Those, that's our conclusion. A year keeps the head of the snake for this, this small section of it. I didn't give her enough credit. Should have, but. And Karen, when we can get in, when I can remote you in the house, when giving her some space right now, 34 Fairview, I'll help you narrow it down. I think it's six or nine thousand dollars per spot. So don't don't do anything right now. But in conclusion, welcome to the trash bucket mothers. Iggy O'Keefe, she's the brainchild behind this. What is her motive? Money. Her end game is money, and not she doesn't know she's gonna. I put her on the stand. That's what I would.